all of the first surfboards were made of wood. And that went away with fiberglass and foam and high production mass produced surfboards. Now once again, they're making custom wood surfboards. The machining technology, finishing technology, and adhesives are different than they were 20 years ago. It really facilitates this sort of thing. There's wooden golf clubs now. They're making custom wooden skis again. Lots of stuff. That was done before, of course. I mean, we have wood, that's all we had was wood skis forever. I was making composite airplanes, and I really thought about using wood, but on the scale of an airplane, it's just too much of a project. But wood is a superb material for airplanes. And I've had wooden boats for 30 years, and they're better than fiberglass and aluminum. The wooden airplanes in my composite airplane was so much smoother and quieter than aluminum. Huh. A wooden bike ought to be excellent. The engineering property should make an excellent bike. But it took me a while to get around to it. like 20 years after I thought of it. <laughs> well, it's the technology, the, the CNC technology wasn't mature when I did think of it. For metals, they've been mature since shortly after World War II, but for wood, no. The whole deal about wood, there's a book called Bicycle Design, written by a professor, MIT professor. And in the book, he talks about the various materials that a bike can be made of. And he mentions wood. He says, wood is great in bending. It's very stiff and blah, blah, all of that. But the failure of wood, or the drawback, is that it is not torsionally stiff compared to the other materials. And that's very true. So his conclusion is, well, you just can't make a bike out of wood because of that. Cool. <laughs> I mean, is that good or what? You want to make a lighter bike and you want to deal with torsion, you make the tube bigger and the wall thickener is thicker and that deals with the torsional issue. So we have, where we have the greatest torsional stress is the down tube, we've got a big fat down tube. Works fine, it solves the problem. But the thing about wood is it absorbs shock and vibration, that's what it does, best of all. The stiffness of the frame, which is to say the torsional, the twisting of a frame is really the stiffness that you want. You don't, and so to most materials, when you get that stiffness, you also get all the other stiffness, which is to say it rides very harshly. Well, so you get a nice torsionally stiff steel frame, and you also get a harsh ride. With wood, you get a very torsionally stiff frame at the same time as a very smooth ride. It's just magical. I mean, it is dramatically different than other bikes. And it looks kind of cool. The other thing is it's, it's a production problem. We tailor the bike ride qualities to the rider. And of course, you buy a production bike, that's what you get. The crafting part of it is the hardest part. That's what absorbs all the time. The machine basic cuts the basic frame out and then handwork makes it look like that. When it comes off the machine, it doesn't look like that. We can make a thousand a year. Let me say, the machine can make a thousand a year. So we have to spool up the crew to do all the rest. And that's the hard part, all of the, the finishing, this blending, uh, really grasping the way things need to flow. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes off the machine, it's not perfect. It's yeah. not like this. Right. Right. So that's hand done, and that's the hard part. Yeah. Right. We've tr I've tried cabinet makers, and it was, didn't work. Right. So I got lots of artists. Oh, OK. Like wood sculptors, basically? Sculptures. Yeah. I made the first 12, and yeah. I've been out of it since. 
I had interviewed and tried out a number of woodworkers, cabinet makers, that I expected to be able to do this work, but when it came to shaping something to make it look good aesthetically, eh, they'd never done that, really. It's got to be a person with a, a sense of craftsmanship who can make that decision. So it is really creative work and we've got a handful of people who are into bicycles and who love craftsmanship, crafting things, making things by hand, oh, that's a big deal. Wood is inconvenient because it's really a pain in the ass to work with. There are so many challenges to working with wood. The various woods, one wood will act one way when you cut it, another wood altogether different. There are so many problems with it. We have to test every stick of wood that we get in the shop. You know, I started out, there's the Forest Products Laboratory has a whole database of the engineering properties of wood, and I thought, okay, we can use this, this is gonna be good. No, it's not even close, it's nominal, and the extent of stiffness variation in each species is very wide. Bamboo is a different material, which we use here. This is our city bike, and we do that in bamboo. With the woods, each wood has a wide range of stiffness, which at first I thought was an annoying drawback. Bamboo is not very stiff, and so that is like riding a couch. It's a great ride for cruising around town. It's very smooth, but it's not very stiff, so even that has wooden stays. The chains stay and the seats stay, or hickory on this, to give the rear end enough stiffness, appropriate stiffness. Much, much stiffer, a factor of two at least. I thought the woods would be more uniform in stiffness, but they're not at all. So it turns out to be that that drawback is a benefit because we can mix the woods and if, for example, you had to have a particular wood like this wenge on the outside, well there's a big enough range of stiffness that we can tailor that to a wide range of rider weights and rider styles. The bikes we make for Audi, there's a city bike, but we use yeah. woods from all over. Curly maple, and Paduk with a Wenge pinstripe. You've gone into partnership with Audi? Yeah. Did they approach you? Yes, they did, yeah. They said, hey, would you guys build bikes for us? I said, nah, nah, we're busy. But then I changed my mind. Their marketing budget exceeds our marketing budget. Actually, they have a marketing budget and we don't. That's probably the best way to say that. <laughs> We've sold bikes to Brazil, France, and Pennsylvania, and all over not to mention the Bay Area. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Robin right. Williams come in yet? He, no, this is the bike that he loves. He's been in twice. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's great, you know, he comes in and he's got a beard and yeah. sunglasses uh, yeah. and all of that. And the second time he came in, there was a woman in here and we're talking about gear ratios and whatnot. And, uh, and so he jumps right in and he says, now for climbing and whatnot, you know, you're gonna wanna, and he goes on. And uh, then he takes off after a while. And she says, was that Robin Williams? <laughs> yeah, he helps out in the shop. Yeah, he comes by. I had the chief of design of Hewlett Packard in here, and he spent at least an hour photographing everything. He said, we see that this is the trend. Instead of cheap, throwaway stuff, people want something that they can associate with, relate to, that has craftsmanship, handwork to it, something that you can keep and treasure. The whole deal about wood, it withstands impact very well. Can you see the dents? So this is titanium, steel, aluminum, and wood. Now those dents are from an eight pound weight drop 12 inches. So if you look at it like this, it's kind of counterintuitive, but the wood doesn't dent much. So that, that's unexpected, like everything else about the wood. I mean, people don't expect that at all. But let us say that e even if you crack this and split it, you can bond it back together. Uh, you can't do that with these. And on these things, when the metal is dented, that's a stress riser and it will crack in time. Our first mountain bike uh, prototype uh, we sent it to Bend, Oregon with, a, with an aggressive 200-pound rider, and he was going down a steep descent and he flipped the bike. And it was a bad crash. The bike landed, contacted right there, a rock. 
and it split that chain stick. And the people who were there said, well, if that had been carbon or a metal, it would have been either broken or really seriously dented, which would be the end of the frame. Well, that very frame is here. We bonded that split, and then we're pulling down here with 3,008 pounds, uh, bending the steel bar. It did fail, but it took 10 minutes. It failed at the headset. But the fact is that where we repaired it, where it was split, there it is. It's fine. And you couldn't do that with any other bike material. Anywhere you go in the world, everybody knows how to repair wood. The wood's pretty easy. Everybody works with that, has forever, right? The first structural material. Yeah, so in a way it's like going back. Which Renovo means I renew. Ha <laughs> ha! Most people haven't a clue how to fix, build, or make anything. Well, they don't do it. People don't do it so much these days. I grew up, everybody did, made stuff. If you look at a fine antique, they're not cracked and split and broken and all. Like fine antiques are worth really good money because of the craftsmanship and the care that went into building them. If we didn't take the care in selecting the woods and going through the process we do, these would split and crack and all of that stuff, or could, but they won't. In 200 years, you can refinish this, just take all the dents out of it and sand all the scratches out, and the wood will look just exactly like this, just like antique furniture. And so, yeah, this, I mean, well, there's bikes that are, well, the first bikes, right? 190 years old. Those two can be refinished, and some of them have been, to look pretty much like this. And that's very cool. I mean, hand it to your grandkids, huh? For my bikes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, perma bikes, yeah.